Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, it's time once again for the main event of the AM. And leading the way, your host, moderator, and guide to the markets, Walker England here, speaking on behalf of DailyEffects.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we kick off another exciting webinar on this Tuesday, focusing on technical trading tools and tactics. Primarily, over the course of the next hour, I do indeed want to bring you up to speed on day trading with Camarilla Pivots. I've had a lot of questions and concerns about utilizing pivots, so by the time you leave here, you should have a better grasp of how to work them into your active trading strategy. So I can't wait to get started. One of my favorite topics, as some of you might know, so let's not waste any further time and get straight down to business. First things first, of course, I do want you to take a quick look at the GoToWebinar software. Now, of course, the GoToWebinar software is streaming today's video, but more importantly, there is a question box. And this question box is how you reach me on this side of the microphone. So if you do have any questions, thoughts, or concerns about today's content, go ahead and ask. I will work as many questions as time allows. Now, secondarily, if you do have some chart requests, make sure you get those in as well. Once we get up to speed with pivot points, I want to work as many examples as time allows also. So I already see some of those coming in. Milton, I got you down for the pound CAD. So uh, sure, if anybody else wants to partake in some examples, feel free and go ahead and utilize the chat box. Secondarily, I can utilize the software to pass you some great resources. Taking a look at our quick poll, what we'll find is 55% of you still haven't taken advantage of our new Q2 currency and CFD forecast. It's some great reading material. It's absolutely all free provided to you, of course, from dailyeffects.com. So if you are ever so inclined, what you can do is follow the link and... Go ahead and download these guides at your leisure. That way you can go back and read through the map at the conclusion of today's event. All right, we've got that out of the way. I just have a few disclaimers to cover before we get started. Why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, markets are risky. And because we can lose money while trading, we should only be trading with risk capital. That is known as monies that we can afford to lose. Equally as important, I do have my hypothetical trading disclaimer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this will be my final slide of the day, but it's very important because you should remember that yours truly, that is me on this side of the microphone, well, I cannot guarantee you returns inside of your live trading account. And of course, past performances of any strategies that we might cover in today's session, certainly past results, not indicative of future return. So please heed these and uh, give them a read. While you do, I'm going to get rolling with my next quick poll question. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this one's a fairly generic question. I just want to know if you're trading with pivots. And there's three options. I just want to see, yes, I am aware of pivots. I'm utilizing them in my trading. Or no, no, I'm not utilizing them in my trading. I'm familiar with the concept, but not using them. And last but not least, what is a pivot point? If you're brand new to pivot analysis, hey, you're in store for a great webinar. But again, this just kind of gives me a feel of where we stand as a group. So go ahead and vote in that poll. I'll give you just a few more seconds here. And while you do, I'm going to queue up our first graph of the day. So going once, going twice, let's go ahead and close off our quick poll here. And what you're going to see is a dollar index graph. Now, did I choose this graph for any reason? No, not necessarily. It was one of the first ones that I pulled up, but it does play into our conversation quite well because what you're going to find are key values already established here on the dollar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, going back to our quick poll, it seems like most of you are already familiar to a certain degree with pivot points, but long story short, that's all they are, support and resistance. 
Now we could spend hours going over all the different ways to find support and resistance. We can use price action. We can look at swing highs, swing lows. We had a lesson on Fibonacci last week. We can use moving averages and so forth down the list. But pivot points are very handy because what it does is every day gives us a new set of lines to trade around. Now this becomes very handy for day traders, right? Because without wasting too much time, I can flip to any graph and know immediately where support and resistance is. So for today, that's going to be our focus of the conversation. Now one of the big questions I got yesterday when we actively day trade with our pivots on Monday, Wednesday, Friday was which pivots are these and what settings are you using in your trading? Well, let's go ahead and tackle that now. First off, when you add pivots to your graph for the first time, you're probably going to be bombarded with a lot of options. Let's go ahead and simplify the analysis. So, if you're using TradingView, you can right click, you can go to Insert Indicator, and go to Standard Pivot Points. From here, you're going to get a settings menu. Now this is the important details. If you want to see the same lines that I have here on my charts, you'll need to go ahead and select the Camarilla pivots. Now notice, there's traditional pivots, there's Fibonacci pivots, Woody pivots, Classic, DeMarc, and Camarilla. Each one of these is going to show us different values of support and resistance. Now I'll inevitably get the question, which one of these lines is the best? Well, when it comes to trading, no indicator is better than the other. Let me be brutally honest about it. These indicators are doing exactly what they are programmed to do. It would be like saying RSI is better than stochastics. Well, no, not necessarily because they're just indicators, right? They're programmed to tell us something about the underlying price action. So all of these selections do use the previous day's open, low, high, and close. They put that into some kind of price blender in terms of a formula, and they will show us support and resistance. Now I'll show you the reason why we use Camarilla pivots here in a moment, but for now, let's go ahead and select Camarilla and move to our next setting. This is going to be our time frame. Now our time frame is going to be a daily. What does daily mean? Does that mean that I have to trade the daily chart? Absolutely not. Remember when I said that day traders want lines once per day so we have an easy to read value for our 24 hour period that we're looking to enter and exit the market. That's what daily implies. Not that we're necessarily trading off of the daily chart, but that we get one set of pivots per day. If I even go in and look at this drop down, you'll see weekly, monthly, and yearly pivots available as well. Having one set of lines per year can be good in its own right, but typically, again, if I'm day trading, I want to see values that are relevant for today's trading period. So hence the daily selection that we have here. Then I just go ahead and click OK, and my Camarilla pivots are going to show up on the graph and wow we've got the pound dollar up now and we see R's meaning resistance and S meaning support. Now again I see most of you already familiar with pivot so you probably already know that little bit of information. So let me tackle the next question that I had in my inbox and also a question that arised in yesterday's webinar. Out of all those different options why do we choose the Camarilla pivots? Well, out of all of our pivots, it allows me to quickly size up the market with just four lines. And I'll show you very quickly. R4, going to be our top line of the day. This is going to be considered an area where the market may be going ahead and breaking out. Specifically, a bullish breakout. Makes sense, right? Price is moving to a higher high. Over the last value of resistance, we would call this a bullish breakout. Then, down here at the low, underneath our S4 line, this is going to be a breakout as well. But it's not going to be a bullish breakout. Makes sense to label this a bearish breakout. There we go, bearish breakout 
underneath the S4 pivot down towards a lower low. So knowing nothing else about pivots, I can look at just my R4 line and my S4 line and quickly gain something about the market. If I change examples again, if I pull up the Aussie Kiwi, again another popular uh, graph that I've been getting questions about, where's price action? It's underneath my S4 pivot, bottom value of the day, so I would say that this is a bearish breakout. If I look at say something like the Euro dollar, is price up at R4 or S4? No. So is this market breaking out? No, it's not, at least not at present. So I can size up whether the market is breaking out higher or lower in just a matter of seconds. Now, last but not least, the final area that we need to talk about is going to be the trading range. Now, based off of the calculation of Camarilla pivots, price action is always going to start in the middle of R3 and S3. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's how it's calculated. This is going to comprise my trading range. Now, why do we call it a range? It goes back to technical analysis 101. What is a trading range? It's an area where markets trade flat in between values of support and resistance. So for this reason, what I'm going to do is highlight R3 as range resistance and back down here at S3, this is going to be my key value of range support. So now I've got four lines and I've got four different labels. I know if the market is going to break out above R4, I can quickly see if we have a bearish breakout down below S4 or if the market is ranging in between. Now going back to the bigger question, why do we go ahead and utilize Camarilla pivots over all the other pivots for day trading? Well again, it does help us quickly size up the market, but I think sometimes it helps to do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. So what I want to do at this point in our conversation, keep these values in mind, and what I can do is just format this just a little bit differently. I'll widen out our Camarilla pivots in red, remember that, and what I'll do is quickly add another pivot to the graph. Now some of our other pivots that we commonly use are going to be called classic pivots. Classic, right, commonly used, and I'm going to use the same settings. I'm going to leave the daily settings so we get a new set of lines for each day, but let me go ahead and change out the colors here. I'm going to have my classic lines in blue, and what I'll do is go ahead and leave my Camarilla pivots in red. We'll click OK, and now, what do we see on the graph? Well, I see values of support and resistance, all right, but notice how much further apart my blue classic pivots are from my red Camarilla pivots. Big difference, right? If we looked at today's trading range for the Euro dollar, from S3 to R3, remember, that's only going to be about 20 pips, very tight range. Now I have R3 and S3 here on my classic pivots, but now the difference between the two, oh, it's gonna be about 160 pips. Now I'm not saying that the Euro dollar can't range 160 pips in a day. I'm sure it has at some point, I'm sure it will again at some point, but on your average trading day, just think about it rhetorically. Does 160 pip trading range make sense? For most traders, that answer is probably going to be no. For me, I know the answer is certainly no, and that's why I typically opt to use the Camarilla pivots. Now check out our R4 lines here. We can see R4 on the Euro dollar at 110.21. Again, that's gonna be about 118 or 117 pips away from present market price. Now, if we get to R4, is it a valid point of resistance? Absolutely. Would we say that the market is breaking out if we reached 110.21? Probably, I think we could all agree that that would be a bullish breakout if we reach this R4 line. But where does our Camarilla pivot have our breakout? Oh, about 100 pips lower. So, 
using this for intraday opportunities, again, the Camarilla pivots, just by the nature of their calculation and being relatively tight, can help us find market transitions very quickly, while it takes a lot longer to reach any of the classic pivot points. Okay, great questions, great comments. Happy to have everybody here. Um, Viv saying, what does the false mean? Um, I think you're referring to uh, one of the settings here. If um, you could give me a little bit of a clarification on where you saw that, go ahead and let me know, and I'd be happy to go ahead and uh, clarify your concern for you. But um, in short, uh, this is going to be the difference between our classics and our Camarilla pivots. Now, of course, there's other options as well. We could continue doing these examples, but to keep our focus here, we are going to transition uh, back to our Camarilla pivots. Okay, uh, this one going to be uh, from Viv saying false in brackets next to the Camarilla pivots. Um, this is just a formatting setting from TradingView. Again, I wouldn't think too much about it, um, but what you'll find is, again, you can turn and turn these off to highlight uh, whether these values are uh, highlighted. But again, none of the settings here need to be changed. Everything can be formatted completely the same. And again, uh, one other setting, I guess, if we want to bring it up is going to be the historical pivots, which if I highlight, notice it checks to true. So in conclusion, if I'm only showing today's pivots, it is going to read false. If I highlight this setting for show historical pivots, this will go ahead and read true. So it's just a toggle switch for this setting here. Again, if you want to see the past pivots, you can. It's a great way to manual back test uh, utilizing pivots once you're a little more familiar with the lines. Okay, Viv saying thanks for the clarification. My pleasure. Let's get into the good stuff, which begs the question. How on earth does anybody use these lines when trading? Now again, when we talk about pivots Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we go through a slew of examples and we look at the market from different angles. But the one caveat is having a plan of action and knowing what to do with these lines. So while I go ahead and queue up my next graph, I want to ask my final quick poll question here. I want to know if you have a trading plan. In short, yes, you do. You know exactly how you're approaching markets. You know what style you're looking to employ in your trading. No, you're not necessarily certain that um, you have an individual approach. Maybe you're working on the trading plan. And my third option is, what is a trading plan? Now, if you fall into the third category, again, absolutely okay. We all have to have a place to start, but depending on what our trading plan is, we're going to look at these lines differently. Because if I'm a breakout trader, I'm going to be looking at my breakout lines completely different than, say, a range trader. Whereas if I'm a range trader, I'm looking at these values different than a retracement trader. Now, we'll work through some examples, but again, as traders, especially if you fall into the know or the what is a trading plan category, start thinking about how you want to approach the market. This way, when you eventually come to a decision, you can write it down, and that way you can always refer back to your trading plan if you have any major questions such as, hey, do I want to be buying here, do I want to be selling, or do I want to be completely out of the market? So for this, I want to transfer back over to our pound dollar graph. Why? Well, we've got a lot of examples here for different styles of trading. And depending on where you fall in, let's see if um, we have any breakout traders in the room. Let's just do a quick yes or no question here. Are you trading breakouts? Why in the chat box? If you're not, go ahead and type in an N. And I will tell you all about this bullish breakout here on the pound dollar. And I see those Ys and Ns coming in. Thank you, everybody, for your participation in today's program. In short, a bullish breakout, as we know from the top half of our hours, a move above the R4 pivot. Think about this as the pricing ceiling overhead for the day. And 
If we break through that ceiling now, we're going to be looking for a continuation in price to the top side. Now we're seeing that uh, play out now, so a bullish breakout may be considered above 29.17. I'll inevitably get the question, let me head it off at the pass, where do we enter into the market? Well frankly, we can enter in any variety of fashions. Um, a lot of traders like to trade breakouts with entry orders, meaning what they're going to do is simply park an entry to buy the market above R4. In the event we get a bullish candle above this value, we'll see that my entry order is going to trigger and at that point in time, you'll notice our order is going to be executed at the prevailing market price. So, if that puts us on the market, now we have to start projecting where we want to take profit and manage our risk, which of course will be the next step. But uh, back to the question on entries, can you trade with the market order? Absolutely. I know a lot of traders that wait for confirmation from a candle close. Again, that will um, relate back to the time frame on your chart. So there's a variety of different methods here. And I don't want you to get too hung up on that outside of just deciding whether you want to trade with entry orders or market orders. Okay. Now let's talk about managing our risk on a bullish breakout and projecting profit targets using pivots. This one's fairly straightforward, right? Because we already have another value of support and resistance to consider when I manage my risk. Let's think about it this way. If the market is breaking upwards in a bullish breakout formation and all of a sudden it turns back inside of the range would I want to be trading a bullish breakout anymore? No, probably not. If the market is ranging, I don't want to be in a breakout position. So traders at first glance can quickly consider managing the risk on breakouts by setting stops inside of the range. So for today, that would be right back at 129.00. So the double odds, the zero zeros, would be a potential area to manage our risk for the session. Now we're starting to get in a scenario where I've got my entry, I have my risk in place now, what do I do in terms of my profit targets? Well traders, what they can do is take a one-time extension of today's range to create a one to two risk reward ratio. This is another reason why I like Camarilla pivots. What you're going to find is these lines are based off of percentages. So they're going to be equidistant, right? If I take two times the distance from R4 to R3, that's going to give me a one-time extension of my trading range. And you can see how those ratios are going to be equal. This way, all things considered for lot size, now I've got a one to two risk reward ratio meaning I only need to be correct on one out of three trades to be break even if not net profitable when I'm trading breakouts. So very important to consider. From there, that's the basis for a bullish breakout on the pound dollar. Now Russ is asking for an example saying, uh, can you comment on the breakout to the top side for the dollar cat? Absolutely, this is one that we have been highlighting for some time. Wow, let's look at this uptrend in play. Going back to the 13th, we're now trading, oh, about 520 pips higher. Very nice uptrend, right? Taking a look, we do have indeed a bullish breakout over 37.07. In this scenario, what we'll find is traders may look to buy a breakout over the high, risk will be back inside of the range, and then we could start extending up the graph. And we'll see our initial profit target is going to be at a 37.36. Now this is where customization and trading plans can come into play because sometimes the market will extend past a one-time extension of the range. 
This is where traders can be creative. You can use things like a trailing stop. You can initiate new positions based off of retracements or breakouts. But again, this does give us an initial projection to create a positive risk reward ratio. So as far as the dollar cat is concerned, and we're right through that first profit target and trading an additional 12 pips higher. So great chart there, Russ. Long distance high five. Happy to have you here on today's program. Now I do want to jump over quickly and take a look at a potential bearish breakout. Now this one is going to be on the Aussie Kiwi graph and what we see is prices moving back down underneath the S4 line. This is going to be the opposing scenario in the fact that it is going to be a bearish breakout. What's nice about Camarilla pivots is if you understand how to trade a bullish breakout, the logic behind a bearish breakout becomes very straightforward. If I'm looking to sell the market, traders may move in and look to set their entries underneath the S4 line. Again, an entry order allows you to enter into the market when prices breach at this point, putting you short in the market. Now let's look at our projections and managing our risk through our pivots. First, let's set a stop back inside of the range. Remember, if the market is ranging, do I want to be trading a breakout? No. So again, setting this at 108.74 or higher allows me a point where I can say I'm absolutely wrong. And let me reiterate this. I think this is probably one of my favorite points about pivots is it does give us that clear point to say, hey, we're wrong in our analysis. And let's be honest with ourselves. When we day trade, we're excited, we get into the market, maybe the market even moves in our favor, right? Great example here. We see prices initially move in our favor if we sold, oh, uh, about eight to 10 pips, right? and all of a sudden the market is moving back. Now if it reaches this point, are we professional enough to close out our trade and say that we were wrong? A lot of times day traders, we're overzealous, we wanna be right, and we have a propensity to say, oh, I'll just give this more room, oh, maybe I'll uh, set my risk back up towards the top of the range, or maybe I'll set it, and all of a sudden we're not holding ourselves accountable with our risk. Now this goes into a broader conversation on the trader's number one mistake. We're going to cover that on Thursday. But in short, if prices breach this line, if I'm using it in my trading plan to say I'm wrong, now I can hold myself accountable. Because if price does one of these and continues moving up, do I have any business selling if prices move up to 109.23, 109.06? Well, I should have been out of the trade perhaps by 108.74. So again, these lines do indeed keep us accountable in the event of a false breakout. With that, let's size up a breakout to the downside. Here we go. What we'll see is prices moving back down to an extension of 33 pips, taking us to 108.24 for one-time extension of the range. So that would be a sample in a bearish breakout. So we'll keep an eye on our breakout trades here. Pound, dollar, dollar, CAD, Aussie, key. Seems like our commodity currency's on the move. And we'll keep up with them through the duration of our program. Okay, uh, this one coming in from one of our guests saying, do you have to place your stop at the R3 or S3 pivot? In short, no. You can place your stop wherever you want. Um, believe it or not, I'm not going to be standing over your shoulder while you're trading, browbeating you, telling you where to set your stop. Of course, in everything trading, there are options. and There's pros and cons that we go ahead and accept when we place an order and manage our risk at certain locations. Now, which is right for you, only you can say. And I guess that's the point here. But if anything, make sure that you're using these positive risk reward ratios. Um, one thing to consider, if you absolutely have to have a wider stop, if we move our risk back to the center of the range, this is going to create a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. If 
I extend this out to two times the range. Now, what do I have? Well, now I've got a one to four risk reward ratio and so forth. So I can use these values to go ahead and have specific pricing targets and extensions based off of my preference. The key is, again, if you want to enter into a trade, consider making more when you're right relative to when you're wrong. And if you feel like you need to extend your stops, consider extending your profit targets as well. Now, it also works the other direction. Hey, I can have a really tight stop. What this does is, hey, I may be stopped out more often than not, but if I use a one-time extension of the range, now I've got a scenario where I have a one to four risk reward ratio. Meaning all things equal for lot size, I only need to be right 20% of the time to be break even if not net profitable. So in short, can you adjust these values? Absolutely. Uh, my last tip hint is to uh, certainly keep those risk reward ratios in the back of your mind. Okay. Great chart there, and wow, time flying by. We are 35 minutes past the hour. We still need to talk about retracements and ranges. So, another yes or no question, ladies and gentlemen. Are you trading retracements or ranges? If you are, go ahead and type in a Y. If you're not, go ahead and type in an N, and uh, certainly this will dictate how much longer we spend on each of these individual topics. So I see those Ys and Ns coming in. Thank you again for your participation. And for this one, I want to zoom back into my pound dollar chart here for today. And what we're going to see is prices above that breakout value, right? We already discussed that. But what happened before prices broke out to the top side. Well, what we have is prices moving inside of our trading range. Now, believe it or not, there's room for retracement traders, range traders, and breakout traders, sometimes all on the same graph. First, let's talk about trading a range. A range trade is going to be prices moving between support and resistance, but traders looking to sell against resistance and buy against support. It's one of the more straightforward strategies out there, but the caveat is, again, every time prices reach resistance, I want to sell, and every time prices reach support, I want to look to buy. Now, arguably, I can continue doing this until one of several things happens. Either first, there's a false breakout in the market, or excuse me, a breakout in the market, or my trading day is going to go ahead and conclude, at which point I'll get new lines and a new trading day. But theoretically, prices can ping between support and resistance until the end of trading. Now, today we are indeed seeing a lot of breakouts in the market, so I do want to work with this example earlier in the day. Basic range trading strategies has a selling resistance and targeting support. So when I sell, I want to look for, again, a one-time extension of the range. And in this example, again, it's just about 33 pips, and my risk can be set outside the R4 pivot because of prices. Are breaking up towards higher highs? Do I want to be trading the range? Absolutely not. Again, prices reach support. Traders can go ahead and look to buy the market and have risk underneath the S4 pivot. Again, if prices break out to a lower low, do I want to be trading the range? Absolutely not. And the process continues down the graph. Now, this is where risk management really comes into play, ladies and gentlemen, because there will be times when the market goes against you. The range trader probably sold against resistance here, had targeted support, and was stopped out when the market attempted a breakout to the top side. Now, in this scenario, correct on two out of three range-based opportunities, and we're making more when we're right relative to when we're wrong. 
So all things equal for lot size, yes, the range trader would have had a fairly good morning here and closing out their final trade for a loss before moving on to another chart in this example. So fairly straightforward range sell resistance buy support repeat process until a said range ends. Okay, so that's going to be range trading. Now let's talk about a retracement. A retracement is just going to be a pullback relative to the overall trend. This is important because, again, not all traders are going to be trend traders or retracement traders. So if this meets your criterion, then maybe you're looking for a pullback relative to an ongoing trend. Uh, taking a look at the pound dollar, Let's say uh, prices have been moving up steadily towards higher highs. We'll just do some quick trend analysis here. And you're looking at this pullback as an opportunity to buy. Now, when I look at this chart, do I have areas to buy? Well, sure, certainly I do. Those are going to typically be on breakouts above R4 or a retracement to S3. Now, notice how I consider this a retracement. Why? Well, it's a pullback against the trend, but whereas the range trader is selling and buying indiscriminately against support and resistance, the retracement trader is only taking one side of the market. So the retracement trader says, I only want to look for an opportunity to buy. So I'm only buying against support, and I'm excluding any of these opportunities to sell against resistance. The idea is to potentially avoid these areas of being stopped out if the trend continues in your potential favor. So we don't have to trade every signal that we see on the graph. And that goes back to the whole trading plan question, right? Do we have to trade every time we see a touch of the line? No. We can trade breakouts, we can trade retracements, or we can trade ranges, and I certainly recommend that you pick one style and from there move forward and work with it and adapt your strategy and then write it down and move from there. Now also, again, retracements can work in both directions. Taking a look at our Aussie key example here, what happened earlier in the morning? Say the market was trending down, pushing down towards those lower lows, and pop back up to R3. This is going to be an area of resistance. It provides us an opportunity to perhaps trade the range, but it also could be considered a retracement or a pullback and a downtrend. Traders may look to sell in this example against R3. This is going to be at 109.06. My stops can be kept outside of the range at 109.21 and my extension down the graph at the bottom of the range at 108.74. So again, a very quick example taking a look at the Aussie Kiwi and retracements. Now from here, we know the basis of how to read pivot points and we can pull up virtually any graph and make some educated trades in the market based off of our trading strategy. So with that, uh, I do want to take some questions. I do want to go ahead and uh, take some chart requests. Milton's been waiting patiently for the pound CAD. Now, I think we all know where this one is going. We have seen from our previous analysis what? We have had the dollar CAD breaking out to the top side. We have had the pound dollar breaking out to the top side. So by proxy, we have the pound strong, the CAD weak, and we've gained all that knowledge through pivot point analysis. We don't even need to uh, look at the trend per se. We certainly can, um, but again, we see it breaking higher uh, just off of that pivot analysis. Now, traders today, if you were looking for a push higher, had uh, several different opportunities to trade. Again, the retracement value was against support. The first retracement trade failed. Notice how prices moved back and attempted to break downwards. This was considered a false breakout. Prices moving back inside of the range before pinging off of our R3 value of resistance at 7605. 
Now price is cruising much higher here. Oh, how high have we risen today? From low to high, we've moved about 200 pips on today's volatility. Very active, the pound cat. So traders looking for a breakout had the opportunity to buy at 76.72. We have our stop initially back inside of the range and our initial projections take us up the graph. And this is going to be towards 77.21. So we're about 40 pips higher off of this projection. Again, traders can look for other breakouts as prices continue up the graph. You can uh, queue up oscillators and look for retracements. But basically, you may select to maintain a bullish bias as long as prices remain above this R4 value. This one's frankly uh, looking like a runaway market here, but again, sometimes we see pullbacks, sometimes we don't. Just depends on conditions and uh, what's occurring in the background of the market. But great example on the pound CAD, one of our stronger breakouts for our cross pairs today. Okay, uh, this one going to be a comment from Augusto saying, take a look at oil. Sure. I could take a look at oil, and uh, specifically, Augusto's asking for Brent crude. Sure. Point in order, while we switch up our graphs, our examples so far today have been what? They've been currency pairs. Now, do we have to use Camarilla pivots with currency pairs? No. We can use Camarilla pivots on a variety of markets, and as we've said before, a variety of different time frames. Now, taking a look at UK oil, let's just back this up a bit. We could see prices uh, relatively range bound for the last uh, two or three trading sessions. If you take this back a little further, you'll see that the um, price of the commodity has been relatively stagnant here, pinging between these values of support and resistance in a longer term a downtrend but for 2017 again prices moving down and up in a relatively confined range so we could take that and move into our shorter term graphs and what do we see for today prices attempting to trade in a range bouncing a little higher off of support reaching R3 and then attempting to break out higher so this is an interesting scenario on UK oil. If I'm a range trader here, I'm probably, or excuse me, I probably got stopped out earlier in the morning uh, just for the fact that prices attempted to break out higher. And if I'm looking for a bullish breakout again, I'm probably stopped out on this false breakout. But what we notice here is that the market turning back inside of today's trading range. And as we stand, even though that first range trade probably didn't work out, we saw the second one did. The market turning back inside of R3, traders again may look to sell against R3, targets at the bottom of the range, and now we see prices back at support. So if you're looking for a range continuation, you may be looking to buy back up to the top of the range. That means my entry would be uh, very close to present market price. My risk going to be just above 51 and my profit target up at 51.62 a barrel. So that's where we stand on UK oil. Now, again, the question is, how are you approaching markets? If you're bullish, are you bearish? Are you looking to trade the range or a retracement? Once we've answered these questions, then uh, we can trade accordingly. But a nice bounce off the range floor. Again, we'll see if we get another breakout off of 5101. But uh, so far today, range traders in command, one false breakout out here on the chart. So I hope that helps Augusto long distance high five. Okay, this one, a comment about the time frame, saying is a 30-minute time frame uh, the best? Well, in short, you can use any time frame you like. Uh, what's nice about these pivots is support will remain support, and resistance is going to remain resistance regardless of the time frame that I select. Notice how support here is going to be at uh, 5122. If I go ahead and zoom this out to a four-hour graph, 
Where's my support line? 5122. Still going to be a value of support. Resistance still going to be at 5163. If I zoom this into a one minute graph, 5163 is still going to be my value of resistance. So in terms of time frames, the pivots frankly don't care which time frame you select. That's more of a me preference and typically when we talk about time frames, it's going to be in conjunction with another form of analysis. And typically that's going to be something like um, another indicator, like an oscillator, you're looking for confirmation from CCI or RSI or MACD, or maybe you're looking for confirmation on a breakout and you're simply waiting for a bar close. Of course, the longer the time frames that we select, the more confirmation we get just based off of the time value there. Pros and cons for confirmation, of course, it takes time to confirm a trade, which means if it is in our favor, we may miss out on some potential profit. Uh, vice versa, if the trade doesn't work out, hey, then all of a sudden I might have been kept out of a bad trade. So that's a question you got to ask yourself. Do you want to trade the line by itself? Do you want to use another tool for confirmation or trade a candle close based off of your time horizon? All valid. Again, goes back to that trading plan question, right? If you choose to use confirmation, Use confirmation, write down what that confirming signal is and use it, and vice versa. If you see the line, trade the line. Again, if you do that, do that every time. I'll be brutally honest with you, yours truly on this end of the mic, I'm more of a see the line, trade the line kind of guy. <laughs> One of my biggest pet peeves is uh, seeing these large candles moving in my favor, and I'm sitting on the sidelines twiddling my thumbs waiting for confirmation. Now. I know up front, full and well, that getting in early may get me stopped out early, but that's a preference that I'm willing to deal with, so I do. But that's a question that you need to decide for yourself. Other traders, I know a few, hate being consistently stopped out from being early into trades, so they prefer to wait for confirmation. Give and take, pros and cons, now you know them and you can decide. All right, uh, yes. Uh, this one is going to be a comment from Gaiola. Hope I said your name correctly there. And this one is going to be for the CAD Swiss. Okay, CAD Swiss. This is great. Another currency pair that I don't get to talk about too often. But again, through pivot points, we can come to a decision about the market relatively quickly. And what we see is prices deadly trending down towards these lower lows. And what do we have? Well, prices definitely in a downtrend, right? We see this downtrend about over 450 pips at present. This morning, price is offering an opportunity to trade against resistance. That's at 72.88. Our extensions are down the graph, 72.68 going to be just about a 20 pip range but now the breakout taking place our bearish breakouts uh, would look a little something like this so risk 10 pips back inside of the range initial profit targets going to be 20 pips down to 72.36 price is already moving through that initial pricing target so at this point we can uh, wait for a retracement or another breakout underneath the low if our trend continues okay Great chart, of course, our reversals put us back inside of the range, at which point we'll look back at the 72.88 again. Just a few minutes remaining in today's webinar. Please get in your final questions and concerns. While you do, I'm going to quickly segue on over to my webinar survey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you. Now, I want to know about today's webinar. I want to know the good. I want to know the bad. I want to know the ugly and everything in between. Why? Well, your feedback matters to me, and your feedback allows me to continue bringing you the best presentations across markets. That's my goal on this end of the mic day in and day out. So fill this out. Let me know what you think. Make sure you select my name from the drop down. That is Walker England, lest you forget it. And then mosey to number seven. This is where you can note any topics or current events that you would like us to discuss.
for future events. I had a high demand to go back and review the basics of Camarilla pivots. I hope I delivered here today, but the sky's the limit for these conversations. We can talk about different trading styles, complete strategies. We can talk about risk management indicators. The sky truly is the virtual limit, but ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, I need to know what you want to talk about. So please go ahead and fill this out. When you are done, click done. It's going to beam the form back to me. I will give it a read and make amendments to the curriculum as necessary. And it's a brand new month, the month of May. Wow, time already flying in the fifth trading month of the year. So we're going to have new webinars on the docket. So get any request in now so we can make changes as quickly as possible. Okay, Milton said, miss the pound cad. Hey, you and me both, my friend, but that's absolutely okay. One part of trading, too, is not worrying about the trades that you missed. It's easy to look at this chart and say, oh, yeah, there's a breakout here at uh, 76.57. Why am I not up 100 pips? Don't give yourself a hard time. Know that there will be other market breakouts out there, and now you'll be able to know how to identify them using pivot points. So I feel there for you, my friend. We've all been there. Long distance high five. I do appreciate having you here for today's webinar. Now, with that being said, in my time remaining, I do need to talk about a few other quick points of order. Of course, I do have this webinar recording. And ladies and gentlemen, I would be more than happy to post up today's webinar at the conclusion of our event. Now, it is going to take me, um, I don't know, normally I have it up by the end of the business day, but at least give me an hour or two so you can catch it on YouTube. Great resource. Let me go ahead and plug this into the chat box. This is going to be our YouTube link, and you'll find wonderful webinars from an assortment of different analysts, researchers, and educators. So check it out. If you want to watch yesterday's day trading markets, maybe you want to see these pivot points in action as we approach short-term trading, hey, check out yesterday's webinar, and I will post today's up shortly so you can review. Now, last but not least, as we turn into the final minutes of our presentation, let me tell you about some great upcoming events. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a packed webinar uh, schedule for today. And coming up next, it's going to be trading price action with Mr. James Stanley. James, I call him the price whisperer for good reason. Find out what the candles are telling him today. That's going to be in one short hour. Then, Tyler Yell, wrapping up the markets, my new favorite webinar. This is the closing bell with Mr. Tyler Yell. Tyler gives us a review of what's happened today and gives us projections into tomorrow's action in three short hours. Last but not least, it is Mr. John Kicklider returning to the microphone to take an open trader Q&A. Basically for this one, guys. You bring the Q's, John's got the A's, that's going to be in four short hours. Ladies and gentlemen, I will make my return to the microphone tomorrow. Same time, same place, different topic. Tomorrow, we're going to focus on day trading markets. Essentially, we're going to take everything that we've learned today, apply it to our graphs in real time, and look for day trading opportunities in a live market. So I can't wait for that, guys. Be there, be square. That's going to be at 10 a.m. Central, 11 o'clock East tomorrow. With that being said, just a quick wrap-up. Ladies and gentlemen, I know Camarilla pivots are new for some of you. Also, looking back at our quick poll question, I see many of you still developing a trading plan. Now, pivots may work into your trading plan. They may not. If you opt not to use pivots, that's absolutely okay. Don't think that you're hurting my feelings. If anything, just keep them in your back pocket as another tool that you have available. But you won't know whether you want to use them or not unless you practice. So that means pulling out the demo, doing a little research, right, and seeing whether you're a retracement-style trader, maybe you're looking at ranges, or maybe breakouts. So with that, guys, that's going to be it for me. 
I do want to thank you for joining me here on a Tuesday. I do want to wish you all the best of luck in your training, and please come back and see me again tomorrow as we pick up our conversation on day trading markets. I can't wait. Hope to see you all then. Have a good one.